what I like to do um, while having these conversations with you guys is to remind you on what is important, right? Uh, food, lifestyle, talk a little bit about relationships, entrepreneurship, right? Healthy conversations um, for us to thrive as a community and as a, as a whatever, whatever, you know, community you're in um, organization, just in your personal lives. So thank you for tuning in. If you're live, thank you for tuning in live. Uh, I am live on Instagram right now. Um, currently now, if you're listening to this, when it's actually released, um, post released, um, I may be live at the moment, but for this current episode, I am filming. I'm currently live, um, on Instagram and I'll be live on other places as well. TikTok twitch youtube a lot of other platforms that you will see me live on right but nonetheless thank you to all the listeners right now since this is a live show i do want to encourage uh if you're in here and you're watching um if you're in the comments um please leave a comment if you would like this is even though it is a live podcast it is a live discussion i would like to hear your guys's feedback um, and we can have some fun with this. So just a little recap of what we started talking about yesterday, right? Yesterday was a brief introduction to the importance of reading labels, right? And we all know if you listened to the podcast yesterday, um, or if you haven't tuned in, we explained, I explained that the importance of reading labels is going to help you increase knowledge on your health and doing this daily is going to increase your overall longevity and sustainability of your health spiritually, mentally, and physically, right? And all three of those components together are going to help, sorry, help you create a healthy, balanced lifestyle, right? Um, so let's get into it. So we, we already went over this, but I'm going to go over it briefly again. The leading causes of death in America is heart disease and cancer, Okay. The majority of these cases are because of lack of nutrition, lack of exercise and a lack of knowledge thereof. Right. So when you look at what causes heart disease and cancer, right, when you are on t uh, watching television or watching advertisements on whatever platform you use, right, there there is a lot of ads that are trying to sell you products to help in treating heart disease and cancer right but how many advertisements how much information how many seminars webinars uh, podcasts whatever you name it that are being endorsed by these companies who help treat these things how much information do you have on actually preventing these main factors of diseases or um, that we have here, especially in America, and of course, globally, right? So what I like to do is give you guys some information to help change your thought process on what heart disease and cancer is. And let you guys know, you know, these things are treatable, okay? There are two things you must do to help yourself um, stay away from these diseases, right? And as I said before, previously, the second important thing, the second important thing to making sure that you can stay away from these diseases in your life is to watch what you eat, right? There's only one thing above that, okay? The second most important thing that you can do in your life to make sure that you can stay away from Heart disease and cancer is to watch what you eat. I'm going to say it one more time. The second most important thing, the second most important decisions that you can make in your life to stay away from heart disease, cancers, other diseases and sicknesses is to watch what you eat. OK, and let's be more specific on watching what we eat, because obviously <laughs> watching what we eat, obviously that's a very vague action call to action right what is watching what you eat what are some examples of watching what you eat okay i'm not just going to sit here and say because a lot of people come and jokingly be like well i'm going to watch it all right i'm going to watch it going to my mouth right okay haha haha -ha. <laughs> ha 
very funny. All right. I got you. But at the same time, we need to actually learn what those actionable items are. So that way you can actually create healthier habits. Right. So we're going to type this in here. Watching what you eat. OK. What are things that you can do immediately? Right. Um, to watch what you eat. And one thing that you can do immediately, like we said previously, is reading your labels, because I'm sure 95 to 90 percent of the world, I would say, go to or have a source of food and they do not produce everything that they eat themselves. Right. And again, I'm saying about 95 to maybe even 99, 95 to 97 percent of the world. Right. That's just my guess off top. Right. That number could be way off, but that's just my guess. Right. A large population of us who populate the earth do not fully have sustainable food resources that we have grown ourselves. So and that if since that's the case, well, no matter where you're getting your food, um, if it is a farmer's market and they might not have an ingredients list. It is finding out what your food consists of, right? And that is what this that is what this is about. So let's continue. So let's talk about um, the main killer ingredients, right? Um, the main killer ingredients, the most common ingredients to spot that are artificial and cancerous to the body. Okay. Now, there are a lot of ingredients, but we want to keep this quick and simple. So we're just going to narrow down a few. OK, the easiest ones that you can spot off top are artificial colors, artificial sugars and artificial preservatives. OK, sometimes, though, these can be tricky. But as you see, when you start reading these labels, if you have not started reading these labels yet, you're going to see that these are the most common as well that's why i say it is it is the uh easiest to spot since they are the most common so when you're looking at let's we can actually bring up an example um let's look at let's take something that people eat every day right let's let's look at jolly rancher ingredients right so Here's just a quick overview of Jolly Rancher ingredients. The Jolly Ran and this is off the Google website, right? I just typed in Google search Jolly Rancher ingredients. Jolly Rancher ingredients vary by product type, but typically include sugar, corn syrup, and artificial and natural flavors. Okay. Um I didn't put corn syrup in there because I consider corn syrup both an artificial color and flavor, but corn syrup is another one of the main killer ingredients and when i say killer ingredients i'm not saying like oh this ingredient is killer you need to use it i'm saying these ingredients will literally kill you okay <laughs> that's exactly what i'm saying these are the ingredients that are what the main causes of these lack of nutrition um heart disease cancer sicknesses and many other diseases right these killer ingredients Let's look at the Jolly Rancher fruit. No, oh, sorry, fruit chews, <laughs> fruit chews. OK, sugar, corn syrup, vegetable oil, malic acid, gelatin. Now, let's pause. Let's pause right here. OK, now I'm going to I'm going to actually go in depth um, later on when we when we start breaking down each of these killer ingredients. Right. Because <laughs> when you start breaking down each of the killer ingredients, it's just more and more like, wow, I did not know that was in that. Right. And on top of that, when you when you directly correlate to, wow, I've been eating that this whole time. And then you're like, wow, this is why I've been feeling this way. This is why I've been diagnosed with this. All these things are literally going to make sense. OK. And it's also going to make sense on why us actually coming together as people and trying to 
have our own food resources is more than just a hobby. It's more than a goal that you may feel is unattainable. And actually, you will see that it's more of a necessity investment for the well-being of our lives. Right. So. Gelatin. If you don't know about gelatin, sometimes gelatin will have pork in it. And if you are not aware, pork is not an animal that should be eaten at all. <laughs> OK, it was not the pork. The pig was not created to be eaten. The pig was created to keep the earth clean. OK, it was never created to be eaten. So let's do your research. Gelatin has pork in it, but we're not going to get super in depth in these. We're just going to read the ingredients. Of the Jolly Ranchers. That's just a quick little intro, right? The fruit trues have sugar, corn syrup, vegetable oil, malic acid, gelatin, corn starch, glycerol, monosterate, artificial colors, lactic acid, sulfur dioxide, mineral oil, and soy lechin, right? Now, like I said, I'm not going to go super in-depth with all of these, but sometimes lactic acid, sulfur dioxide, mineral oils, and soy lechin can be created through the use of natural ingredients but also processed with chemicals so therefore it is not natural okay you can get soy lechin naturally from certain types of fruits and vegetables but for the most part the jolly ranchers they're not doing that okay I can almost guarantee you they're not doing that why because jolly rancher is a huge company that is not really concerned about your well-being let's put it that way all right. They are they are more concerned about capitalism and how to make the most out of the simplest things. Let's 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 be honest here. Jolly Ranchers are, are a simple candy to create, um, considering that they don't have a lot of food in them. What is a Jolly Rancher? It's literally I'm going to read it to you. A bunch of sure sur uh, sugar, syrup and artificial flavors. How much food was in that ingredient? I, I'm going to read it again. I want you to tell me how much food are in these Jolly Rancher ingredients because it's not much food. Okay. Sugar, corn syrup, artificial flavors, and natural flavors. It's a, it's literally sugar and corn syrup. That's, that's the most possible food that you have in a Jolly Rancher. That's not candy. Candy, yeah, candy can be sugar. And it can be syrup, but not this type of sugar and this type of syrup and not this type of artificial flavors. This is almost like eating plastic. Honestly. All right. So. Those are some of the ingredients that you'll find in your everyday Jolly Rancher. Right. And think about how many Jolly Ranchers you could eat in a year as a child. You know, you might go through 100, 200, 300, 500 thousand Jolly Ranchers. That's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. And those are the things. And, and these are the health, the, the habits that are being groomed into our youth um, that are being groomed even as we grow um, into adults. And we just kind of bypass them. And then and then when we get older, we're like, yo, how did I get cancer? And it's like, dude, you've been eating a ga gallons of sugar, high fructose corn syrup, artificial flavoring. You could you could probably just on Jolly Ranchers alone ruin your life, honestly, if, just on Jolly Ranchers alone. So, like I said, this is we're not going to get too in depth in this conversation here, because this conversation is really just to inform you guys on the importance in reading labels, um, give you an example of the killer ingredients that you can find in these labels, and then also show you how to implement reading labels to actually benefit your physical, mental and spiritual health into your lifestyle. Right. So let's conclude with in order to create a society that can be healthier, smarter and enjoy life, we have to be able to say no to artificial flavors and ingredients that the FDA and other industries are forcing onto society. If we as people do not take control of what we eat, we will be manipulated by the capitalism of society. Right. Unfortunately, but we have to we have to we have to keep it real here. We can't cap. Right. We can't cap. If the FDA was actually concerned about our health. They would make sure that we are not eating chemicals, right? Unfortunately, the FDA is a part of this machine that is capitalistic, right? Because whatever the FDA allows, they will be funded to be keep being open and keep making decisions, right? 
But we as people really need to hold the FDA accountable, accountable, right? Because if you're going to call yourself a food and drug administrator, your main priority is to make sure that what we give our people is what go, is going to help keep them alive, help them be sustainable and help them be healthy. But the sad truth is about our country right now in America, I can't speak for everywhere, right? Because I'm not everywhere in America. The Food and Drug Administration does not have your best interest. So until that changes, my stance will stay on that. And I'm not afraid to tell anyone that because it's the truth and we shouldn't be scared to have a voice in this country. That's what, you know, this country was founded upon. Right. So it has to work in our advantage. Right. If we're being truthful, there's nothing to hide. Right. Unfortunately, the FDA is allowing all of these flavors to be in your food. Right. We also have to remember that the FDA is a food and drug administrator. The FDA does not stand for Food and Health Administration. Okay? The the FDA is a drug administrator. So, if you look at the ingredients that we just read, a lot of those ingredients are, can be used in drugs, right? And drugs are not healthy at all, okay? For example, if I have a headache, a lot of people want to just if you have a headache, you want to take ibuprofen, right? That is a drug and that drug may relieve pain, but all it does is tell your receptors to not feel the pain. It's not telling you, hey, my headache is letting you know that something is going on and it is not curing what is causing the headache. All that it is doing is is actually weakening your your brain, your cells, your your receptors, your nerves. On top of adding all of the chemicals in there that is going to mess up your digestive system and cause many other million side effects that you hear them read super fast on the commercials. If you take this and you have heart disease problems, cancer, and you can end up with it, all of that, <laughs> that's what the FDA is administering to our people. So, unfortunately, we have to, for one, put pressure on the FDA to let them know that we are paying attention and we are watching what they're doing. Because if not, then we are literally just going to be turned into robots and you also have to know that the fda is part of the depopulation plan that is going on right now okay if you don't believe me look up what kamala harris said in her interview she admitted you can type in you can you can look these exact words up she said that in order to have children breathe cleaner air we need to invest in depopulation so She's va she's basically saying invest into killing people. How else can you depopulate the earth without wiping people out? So you have to think, you know, where is this? Where is this going? You know, um, I know we're in a situation where we it's either for president, you got Kamala or Trump. And I'm going to I'm going to tell you each each to their own on that. But we must look at all these things that are being presented. Obviously, there's pros and cons to both. But there are things that we can control. We can control what we eat. Why? Because we can create food access for ourselves we can partner up with people in our communities and we can figure out a way to organize and get food grown so that way we don't have to be a lab rat given by the fda right so like i was actually just saying right what should we do next right what we should do is connect with local farmers get organic food learn the process to grow our own herbs flowers and produce right this is the best way for us to heal as a people. And I'm going to give you a few reasons why. So connecting to local farmers, right, is a, almost a necessity for anyone that's alive because we all need food and food is a core investment into your family's health. So here's a quick here's a quick tip for all my men out there. Right. My, my leaders out there. If you really want to lead, right, and you, and you want to have a big family, it is very, or even if you want to have a small family, whatever you want to have, it's important to have a list of priorities, right? A priority list for anyone living in America is to try and make sure your kids, your youth, your family, your immediate circle has access to food that will heal them and nutrient, no, give them nutrients. <laughs> yes, that is going to give them nutrients, right? So what does that mean? When you go to farmers markets, you know, introduce yourself to these farmers, ask them how they grow their food, ask them what is in their food. And if possible, 
if possible, asked to be a part of the process. OK, and I and I gave this um, quick tip earlier, literally earlier today. Right. Um, America's economy is wild right now, as we know. Right. Fluctuating. And think about the earth. Right. No matter how the economy is doing. You can always go outside and plant a seed. Right. And and that gets overlooked in this community. Um, and I would say it gets overlooked in the world because a lot of people, you know, in America, like I said, I'm in America. I can't speak for everywhere. America really pushes. This idea of a glamorous lifestyle, but it's really a lifestyle that is not based on living off of the land. And if you don't have many resources, if you don't know where to start with your career, if you don't know a purpose for yourself, a purpose for pretty much any human being is to grow food because literally there is no one on this earth that can survive without it. So we all have a common goal right there, right? You know, people people will say like, oh, not, not everyone is meant to do a certain thing. I agree on that. But when it comes to something that we all do, I I am an advocate that everyone can grow something or at least be a part of that process. Right. Maybe you are the person that should be overseeing the land for the food production. Right. Maybe you're the person that can organize people together to get people to grow food. Maybe you're the grower. Maybe you're the cultivator. Maybe you're the harvester. Whatever that you can do to get into this process. I can guarantee you it will help the process. Right. And that's what it's about. Maybe you're the podcaster who is like, this is what we need to do. This is how we spread information. But either way, there needs to be some push, some action taken behind getting our health in order. Right. We can't just say we need better food. We need better food. And the FDA is like, we don't care. You're going to buy what we give you. You keep buying it. Why would we change it? If it's not broken, don't fix it. Right. So that is the way that we need to go there. Also. Learn the process to grow your own food, herbs, flowers, and produce, right? So I, I really talk to a lot of people to show, you know, they're like, oh, man, I don't have enough space, right? And I understand that when because I think most people, when they dream, they dream big. They, you know, you, you, don't, you don't dream small. So, But at the end of the day, with anything, I don't care what you're doing in life. It, everything takes practice, right? So let's say you're living in an apartment. And all you have is a balcony worth of space. Start some starter plants off based on the sun. If you if you can start some cool season, whatever cool season. You, we have to remember that crops will grow when it's cool. They don't always need full sun. So you can start with frout, flowers, fruits and herbs that don't require f full sun, depending on where you're at. If you get some sun, start there and you need to start learning the process. OK, this is the type of dirt I need. This is how long a seed takes to germinate. This is how you grow and raise the seed. Learn pH, learn moisture, learn food, learn composting, learn the things, the, the what the little details. Right. Because that, those things are going to play a huge part into the farming process later down the line and the more understanding that you have of the subject is going to be easier to find yourself to fit in these different projects and these different roles some farmers only need people to start their plants off for them and keep them for a certain amount of time before they transplant them into their farm and imagine if you're supplying somebody 50 to 100 to a thousand um, starter plants for them that is almost that could be anywhere from seven days to five years depending on you know if you're doing seeds that are just for fruit or if you're actually growing trees you can be a you can save someone seven days in between seven days or five years just because you are a part of that beginning process right and imagine how much time um that will take off of someone's plate and resources and that is the way that we build this ecosystem on top of that we gotta remember all this is flourishing off of the land so it how unless there is, you know, unless this place turns into a wasteland like <laughs> like Mad Max or something. All of this stuff is going to keep reproducing itself. Right. And that's what wealth is. That's what riches are. And that's what sustainability is, is the fact that these resources are going to continue to reproduce themselves and we're going to do it in the right way. Right. 
So that is a quick introduction on the importance of reading labels. Also, with a little bit more information on how you can find yourself getting into this process of food development, health development, and just a better balanced lifestyle. Again, um, if you would like to come and talk about uh, something uh, for the podcast, whether that is for business, uh, lifestyle, entrepreneurship, relationships, please reach out to me. I appreciate all the people who are alive. I appreciate all the people who are listening. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. We will talk back in soon. Peace.